Hit Film Sensei here. Today in this video, we're going to make a shockwave. So this effect is actually pretty easy to achieve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making a new composite shot, and I'm only going to make it two seconds long, okay? And click OK. And I'm going to make a new plane layer, which is going to house the effect, and click OK. All right, what I want to do is, is I want to start by adding a fractal noise effect to it. And after playing around with this a lot, I decided that the type of fractal noise, Wisp, works best. Okay. Under the sub or appearance, color number two, I'm going to change the color to that of the shockwave, which in this case I want to be blue. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Now I'm going to use my mouse wheel to scroll out here a little bit. And my right click, I'm going to drag this up a bit so that I have some room underneath. And the reason is because I am going to create a mask. So I'm going to grab my rectangular mask tool and I'm going to draw a mask underneath the plane right here about that big. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. I'm going to twirl open the properties, transform, and under position, I'm going to keyframe that. I'm going to move in about five frames forward and then I'm going to bring the mask up and into the plane itself, okay? And then I'm gonna go to the end of the timeline by hitting the end key, and I'm just going to bring it up a bit further, but not much, okay? Because the shockwave itself will actually fire in quickly and then just barely move from there, right? Expanding, doesn't expand much, all right? I'm going to, under shape, change the feather, to about 100 pixels, which is a lot. I'm really feathering that a big time, right? So now it looks like this. Yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the checkerboard background so that you can see how it looks, okay? Now we just have to make it into a circle. And how do we do that? Very easy. We use the polar warp effect and we drag that onto the plane as well. Now I'm gonna use my mouse wheel and zoom in here a little bit so that we can see it and it looks like this. Yeah, it looks pretty nice, right? So what we're going to do now is, is we're going to have these little wispy things kind of change over time, but just barely, not a lot. So under the fractal noise, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to go to the beginning of the timeline, and I'm going to keyframe the seed. I'm going to go to the end of the timeline by hitting the end key, and I'm just going to barely change it, point 0.1, okay? Yes. So now, if I do a RAM preview, it looks like this. And you can see how those are kind of changing as they are continuing to expand a little bit. Okay. Now, from here, you can start playing around and making adjustments. And that's, I'm going to leave the rest up to you. Okay. But I'm going to give you a couple of ideas, all right? Number one is under the appearance subsettings, you can mess around with the exposure and the offset numbers. So I may up the exposure a little bit. I may drop down the offset a little bit, that kind of a thing, okay? For now, I'm just going to leave those where they are, okay? Then you want to start layering things, okay? So I'm going to right-click on it and change the blend mode to add. That way I can add more layers. I'm going to right click and duplicate. That will expand it and I'm going to do it one more time. Right click and duplicate, make a third one. Now that third one I'm going to change. So I'm going to twirl it open and under the effects, under the polar or the fractal noise, I'm going to change the seed. We're going to go from 0.1 to uh, 0.2 instead so that it's a little bit different. Okay. Also, I think I will change the color as well. So uh, again, under fractal noise, appearance, color two, let's make it purple. So it just looks a little bit different. Okay. And then also, I think I'm going to create one more duplicate. And that duplicate, I am going to make a little bit smaller just so that it sort of covers the inside a little bit more. Okay. And I think I might change the uh, the seed on that as well, just because. Okay, so let's go uh, 0 0.6 to um, 0 0.7. 
Okay. All right. Now let's take the whole thing. We're going to make a new composite shot and this will be our final. Click OK. I'm going to drag composite shot number one into it. Again, I want to get rid of the um, checkerboard and I'm going to do two things. One is, is I'm going to up the scale of this to fill my entire frame like that. And then two is I'm going to have it fade out over the last second. So I'm going to go to one second and click the opacity uh, keyframe. And then I'm going to go to the end of the timeline and I'm just going to have it fade out. So now if I do a RAM preview, it looks like this. So from here, it's just a matter of playing around with the different settings of the fractal noise. You might also think about adding a glow effect to it. Uh, or maybe multiple glow effects to kind of create a, a more of a 3D pop to it and that kind of thing. Uh, and then you just add it right into your shot. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from HitFilm Sensei, consider liking the HitFilm Sensei Facebook page, following the HitFilm Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the HitFilm Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday, and thanks for your support.